Today is the 9th of July. On the 9th of July in 1776, the Declaration of Independence, which had been signed in Philadelphia five days before, made its way to New York City and was read aloud. And as it was read aloud, a crowd formed and decided they were going to declare their own independence from King George, led by Hercules Mulligan, a man who is gaining some new fame because of the Hamilton uh, a musical, uh, led the group. And they went to a city park that had a large statue of King George astride a horse. It was supposed to evoke uh, images of the Roman Caesars. He even had a garland of olives around his head. They came to that statue, threw ropes around it, pulled the statue down. They cut off the king's head. They took the rest of the statue to a foundry and had it melted down to make bullets. The head, they stabbed a bayonet into its eye and they ripped off the olive branches and they hung it up at a bar in New York City. George Washington forbade any of his troops from taking part in that. And so we see even in 1776, we were having these same debates we're having now about statues and should they be up and should they not and who is worthy of a statue and who is not. Now, I've got some pretty strong opinions about those, but that's really not what I want to talk about today. I want to instead suggest that anytime we erect a statue or try to put someone on a pedestal, in one way or another, they're going to find a way to disappoint us. A number of years ago, a seminary was needing some cash and they came up with a great idea. Let's name the seminary after this man that everyone admires and respects and his name will generate cash, will generate donors for us. And it worked for a while, but the man was still living. And he committed some atrocities, I suppose. I don't even remember what it was now, but what I do remember is the seminary had to just very quietly remove his name from the seminary. If we put our faith in people, sooner or later, they're going to find a way to uh, undermine that faith. It's just who we are. And if we erect statues or name buildings or whatever, even to people who are dead, we may discover later uh, things about them that we wish perhaps we didn't know. The Bible understands this. In the 146th Psalm, we are told, Do not put your trust in princes, in mortals in whom there is no help. When their breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day, their plans perish. Happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is the Lord their God. And of course, we see when we get to Revelation how in the kingdom to come, all honor and glory and praise is heaped only on the Lamb. Honor and, lo and glory and praise are not heaped on ordinary people, but heaped only on the Lamb, only on Jesus, only on of the Godhead. And so we are reminded in Scripture that if we put our trust in princes, uh, they will let us down one way or another, uh, not least of all by dying on us sooner or later. Over in Isaiah 55, there is another passage that speaks about memorials that we might erect. Isaiah is describing the time in the future when the kingdom of God will come, and he says, For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. And I just love that. Isn't that what we all want? And we can experience a little of that now. You shall be led out in joy and brought back in peace. And the mountains and hills before you shall burst into song. All the trees of the field shall clap their hands. And I can kind of picture uh, Julie Andrews. The hills are alive with the sound of music. And then, though, we get to this wonderful piece where Isaiah tells us, Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be for the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall never be cut off. The memorial that God will have are, is a living memorial, myrtle and cypress trees. Even more importantly, it is you and I, living memorials to God, to the salvation that God gives, to the joy and the peace that God gives. Those are the very best of memorials. And if we truly put our trust in God, put our hope in God, look to God for joy and peace, that is where we will find the best, not only memorial, but the very best life possible. And we find the one that we can put our trust in that we never, ever 
have to worry about him abusing that trust or misusing that trust or us having to tear him down because as Isaiah says, that will be an everlasting sign that shall never be cut off. My brothers and sisters in Christ, we serve a living God and because God is with us, we can say, Amen. Let all of these things be.